given below are the profit and loss accounts of H Limited and its subsidiary S Limited for the year ended 31st March 2017. So we are given figures in lakhs of rupees, sales and other income, increase in inventory, expenses are given, raw material consumed, wages and salaries, production expenses, administrative expenses, selling and distribution expenses, interest, depreciation. Profit before a tax is given, provision for the tax, profit after tax, dividend and the balance of the profit. In other information, they are saying H Limited sold goods to S Limited for rupees 120 lakhs at cost plus 20 percent. Inventory of S Limited includes such goods valuing rupees 24 lakhs. Administrative expenses of S Limited includes 5 lakhs paid to H as consultancy fees. Selling and distribution expenses of H Limited include rupees 10 lakhs paid to S Limited as commission. H Limited holds 80% of the equity share capital of 1000 lakhs in S Limited prior to 2015-16. So we are having 80% shares in the subsidiary. H Limited took credit to its profit and loss account, the proportionate amount of dividend declared and paid by S Limited for the year 2015-16. Yes, they are saying prepare consolidated profit and loss account. So instead of a consolidated balance sheet, we are supposed to prepare a consolidated profit and loss account. The principle of consolidation again remains the same. You have to do line by line addition. So if you see here, right, you have to simply carry out line by line addition. That's it. Sales and other income, take a line by line addition. Here also line by line addition. Everywhere. You have to keep on doing line by line addition. If there is any intercompany transaction, it is to be eliminated, right? We have to eliminate it when we prepare the PL. Remove it from the debit side, remove it from the credit side. So, which are the intercompany transactions? Look at the first one. H Limited sold goods of rupees 120 lakhs, right? This must be lying in sales of H. This must be lying in purchases of S. So when you are preparing the consolidated p and l reduce the sales by 120 reduce your purchases by 120 okay inventory of s limited includes goods valuing rupees 24 lakhs so this will give rise to unrealized profit so when you are preparing the consolidated p and l you have to simply eliminate the unrealized profit so they have given us yes they have given us increase in inventory here it is increase in inventory this increase in inventory will be including the unrealized profit so eliminate the unrealized profit from here simple what more have they given yes they are saying administrative expenses of s limited includes five lakhs paid as consultancy fees so in sales and other revenue remove five lakhs remove five lakhs also from administrative expenses Selling and distribution expenses of H Limited include rupees 10 lakhs paid to S Limited as commission. So 10 lakhs included as commission, right? So 10 lakhs that you have paid to S Limited as commission, it must be lying in sales and other income. Remove 10 lakhs from there. And it is in selling and distribution expenses. Reduce that by 10 lakhs. H Limited holds 80% of the equity shares. Fine. H Limited took credit to its profit and loss account the proportionate amount of dividend declared and paid by S Limited for the year 2015-16. So whatever dividend that we have received from the subsidiary, that dividend has been credited by us to our profit and loss account. Uh, that is what they are suggesting, right? So what to do with this particular dividend? When you are preparing consolidated profit and loss account, we will ignore this information. So this information will be ignored by us when we are preparing the p &L. This is a mistake which has been committed by the parent. Understand, whatever dividend that you are receiving from the subsidiary, the dividend is for pre-acquisition period. The dividend relating to pre-acquisition period should be credited to the investment account. It should not be credited to the profit and loss account. So this is an error that has been committed, but as far as the consolidated p &L is considered, we will not give any adjustment relating to the same. This adjustment is to be given when you are preparing the consolidated balance sheet. So when you prepare the consolidated balance sheet, at that time we identify that what are the mistakes committed and those mistakes will be rectified by us. 
The reason why I will not give a fact when I'm preparing the consolidated P and L is because when we prepare consolidated P and L, we require items which will affect our debit side, which will also affect our credit side. So debit and credit both should be eliminated. For example, when you will eliminate this 120 lakhs, right? When you eliminate this 120 lakhs, sales will be reduced, purchases will also be reduced. When this administrative expenses will be uh, will be eliminated, administrative expenses will reduce and the other income will reduce. Selling and distribution I'm showing as commission, right? Selling and distribution. So sales and other income will reduce and selling and distribution expense will also reduce. But the problem with the dividend is it is included in other income while that same dividend is included in the dividends paid by the subsidiary, right? The dividends paid by the subsidiary. Now, when I will prepare consolidated profit and loss account, I will prepare the consolidated P and L only up to profit after tax. Okay. I will prepare it only up to profit after tax. Now, if I give the effect of the dividend, right? If I have to eliminate from the dividend, I have to eliminate from other income. I have to eliminate from the dividends paid by the subsidiary. But because my consolidated PNL will end at the PAT, right? It will end at the PAT. If I give a fact of the dividend, then I'll be able to give, give only one effect in the PNL. The second effect is that the dividend paid by the subsidiary has to be reduced by the amount of the intercompany dividend. Get my point. But because the consolidated PNL will end at profit after tax figure, if you recall the format of the PNL, we start with revenue and other income, then total expenses, and then we find profit before tax and then profit after tax. The moment you calculate profit after tax, the format of the PNL ends. So if you give a fact of the dividend, then you will reduce the other income by dividend. When I will prepare my consolidated PNL, other income will reduce. But the corresponding effect which should happen on the debit side, that is the dividend paid by the subsidiary, which also needs to be reduced, will not happen. So only one effect will get captured in the PNL that will distort your consolidated PNL. So we will not give a fact for the dividend. We will ignore it right now. But yes, when I will prepare a full-fledged consolidated balance sheet, at that time I will rectify this particular mistake. But as far as the consolidated PNL is considered, we will not be giving any effect for the same. Yes, the rest we can take care of the same. Prepare the necessary work in notes. This information, then I'll prepare the work. Say revenue from operation, it should be from. Revenue from operations or consolidated profit and loss account. If you see the PNL. They have given you 5,000 and 1,000. So we will do line by line addition of it. Right, we say as given. 5,000 plus 1,000, it is 6,000. Below that we say this. Uh, 
elimination of intercompany elimination of intercompany under that i say sales 120 consultancy fees five commission ten Five eight six five. Now we say consolidated. Profit and loss account of H Limited. For the year ended 31st March say revenue from operations five eight five total revenue five eight six five expenses say uh, increase in inventory right we'll do a line by line addition i'll just show in brackets 1000 plus 200 and from this the unrealized profit needs to be eliminated so I will go to the question. Right, what we can do here is can make this as working notes, and this is the first one. And I like to put as a second working note unrealized profit. We have sold at cost plus 20 percent right and goods valuing 24 lakhs so the unrealized profit 24 into 20 by 120 so it is four lakhs Minus four. It's double one nine six. From 
material consumed. Eight hundred, two hundred. Minus intercompany one twenty. That sales must have been included in the purchases. Eight eighty. Wages and salaries line by line addition. Production expenses line by line addition three hundred administrative expenses two hundred plus hundred minus five. Two nine selling and distribution expenses two hundred plus fifty minus ten two forty. Interest one fifty depreciation right line by line additions over here hundred and fifty hundred and fifty total expenses. One seven six nine four profit before tax two minus so five eight six five. Four zero nine five tax expense. Here it is twelve hundred and two hundred fourteen hundred. Finally, the last head profit before. Four minus five. Two six nine six. That's our PM. Anything is pending? Yeah, this is the place where you can pause the video. Exp from expenses, if it is pending, yeah, you get a good look of the PM. You can, of course, show them under appropriate heads. You can prepare notes. I've just shown in total that how the PNL will be prepared. Uh, you can definitely put it under appropriate notes and you can present the PNL.